Yo, yo, Daily Fire, episode 200. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com for all your supplement needs. Go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire, episode 200. Mama, we made it. 200. PSA. No more fucking excuses. I'm going to lay a few out for you real quick. Hey, Corey, has your body got like that because of your genetics? Hey, Corey, aren't you tired of eating similar things all the time? Hey, Corey, I can't believe that you keep getting up. Hey, Corey. Nah, motherfuckers. Excuse, 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 excuse. How about this? I'm going to flip it to you the other way. Aren't you fucking tired of not looking the way you want to look? Aren't you fucking tired of not feeling the way that you want to feel? Aren't you fucking tired of it? Aren't you done with it? Motherfucker, I was done with it. I said, I want to look like the guys in the fucking magazines. I want to be the motherfucker that my abs is so crazy when people see it, they can't believe they're real. I wanted to be impressive. I wanted to be confident. I wanted to go next level. I was fucking tired of it. I was tired of it in my life. I was tired of it in the gym. I wanted to be fucking strong. I wanted to be strong mentally. I wanted to be strong physically. And I've been building this motherfucking machine for 20 fucking plus years. Motherfucker, I'm not tired of it. No. You know what I'm not tired of? Fucking winning. And if you want to fucking win, you need to get your shit together. I'm doing this PSA because I see the excuses. I also see the excitement. But guess what? The excitement is going to leave. And then you are going to be left with these fucking excuses. So no, if you're not a D1 fucking pro athlete genetics, guess what? Neither am I. I didn't... I wasn't born with fucking abs. I wasn't born with a 300 pound bench press or a 500 pound squat or any of that shit. You got to fucking build it. But guess what? We have a system to keep your mental game locked in. We've got a system to keep your fucking body locked in. We've got a program. We've got, we got everything laid out. The support is there. So don't allow your excuses that come up every fucking year and hold you back from your dreams. How about you go fucking seize your dream this year? How about you say, fuck these excuses, I'm gonna go all in. Don't give me one of the things that we do. There's four things that we do that changes the body. Not just changes the body, we force the fucking body to change. You gotta have your fucking training together. You gotta have your nutrition together. You gotta have your supplements together and you gotta have your conditioning together. We've got the process. Don't go, I'm gonna do this part, but I'm not gonna do that part. Or I'm gonna do this, but you know what? I like to run, so I'm not gonna lunge. Do the fucking program all in. No more excuses. Somebody comes up to you on Thursday and says you want to, hey, can you eat this cookie? No, you can't fucking eat that cookie because it's not in the fucking rules. Follow rules, have accountability, and change your shit. Look, everyone is fucking human. I just let it get away from me. I just posted the motherfucking picture today. I was 213. I had a little, I call him little Action Jackson cellulite on my abs. Wasn't feeling real good about it. I look at it, it's a little upsetting. I was dealing with some injuries, excuse. I was doing this, I didn't lunge, excuse. You see what I'm saying? But I got my shit together. Lost 20 pounds in 12 weeks and got my bricks back. Yeah, mama, I got the bricks back. And now we're going to make them crazy. 3D shredded. Whole nother level. Do you hear the excitement in my voice? Because 12 weeks ago, I wasn't this confident. But motherfucker, I am now. And I'm going to go to a whole nother level. So you got to quit fucking going with these little whiny ass excuses. That's what's holding you back. You are holding you back. So if you want to go next level, if you want to take this shit serious, bring the motherfucking A game. Because the reality is your results to this point have probably been a C game or a C minus game or maybe a motherfucking D plus. Or you could have been failing the whole motherfucking thing. But guess what? You got a chance to go get an A. And if you really fucking kill it, I might even send a motherfucking car to your house. Daily Fire episode 200. Let's go. Ah! <laughs> yo yo daily fire episode 211 if it's trash turn it off 
But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. For all your supplement needs, go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire, episode 211. We're going to talk about being fearful. Fear is like an interesting thing to me because, and, and I have to run this kind of in my head all the time. Usually when you're being, being fearful of something, you're actually creating suffering currently for something that doesn't exist yet. Think about that for a second. So this is a great example, right? When people come over to uh, do anabolic fasting or people come over to do some of the programs that have high reps in them, they're fearful that when they do fasting that they're going to get small. They're fearful when they do high reps in volume that they're going to get weak and shrink. And then, but they don't really know. So they're, they're afraid to go into the protocol because they think something's going to happen. So then they limit themselves from trying something that's really working for a lot of people. So that's one thing that I see all the time. Number two, within business, this always happens, right? They're fearful of a risk because they're afraid what's going to happen. And I get that, right? Everything and every risk and every chance I take is calculated because you don't really know how it's going to turn out. You just don't know. But you have to understand and have confidence that you that you know you will have solutions when these things arise. That there's going to be something that's like a curveball that then you have to address and handle. There's something that's going to happen that you're going to have to, you know, um, make good with and figure out a solution. So if you have like that confidence set up that you'll be okay, then the fear actually kind of lowers. The people that are like so scared that they don't take the chance, it's because they cannot think or grasp that they'll be able to handle if something bad happens. Now, look, you don't want anything bad to happen. I never intentionally, like when I go into a risk, think that it's not going to work, but that might be part of the reason why it works because once I address all right, here's the worst case scenario. Am I okay or will I survive if that happens? Then I never think about it again. So when we came to buy this building and I thought to myself, all right, this is a big risk on paper um, for the situation of I was kind of overpaying because I pushed a person out of here, but I was looking at a long-term idea of that I was going to can't, and it's only you know, 11 years old, 10 years old, like I'm going to be here for like eight or 10 more years. Like I know that I'm camping out here. So it's like, I'm looking at as a long-term play. And then the other thing is, well, what happens if the businesses don't do good and they can't, they can't pay the rent? Well, then I'll have to have a solution where I'll have to pay it or rent it to someone else. Like I don't want any of those things to happen and they're not going to fucking happen. But I had to think about what's the situation if none of this shit works the way I want it to. And then I thought, but what if it really works? What if all the businesses are under one roof? Just because the timing that I thought I, you know, the timing wasn't right for this move, but is the time ever fucking right for the move? Like the reality is, is I had to jump at the opportunity. I had to create the situation and then understand that the possibility of having everything under one roof, like and being able to be efficient and being able to execute, being able to walk from old school gym, the max effort to the lunge and learn network, literally within a hundred feet or whatever, like that opportunity in that possibility and understanding that shit would really have to hit the fan for this not to work. It took my fear way down. And then only thing I could think about was, How to do I make it work? How do I make it work? How do I execute right now? How do I fucking get this shit done? Everyone rallied behind. Everyone was contributing. It was like once everyone understood that this was a real possibility, I could feel the excitement of from the gym to max to then once we build the studio and there was zero fear because why would I be like, well, If those few things would go wrong, then I shouldn't do this. But the flip side was none of that shit is showing that it will go wrong. 
the thing that's showing itself is that the opportunity to allow all these things to rock together. And so I think that when I'm like looking at certain things and the fear creeps in, I try to think, am I going to allow that to create some type of suffering of what could possibly happen? I just push that shit out and go, what happens if it goes this way? That, that this could happen. I'm always going to be more, you know, optimistic over pessimistic, but a lot of people don't operate that way. And this took a really long time for me with all the personal development and all the things that I do on a regular basis to build this confidence, which is why I wrote the book, how to build confidence and win at life, which is coming out soon because it's all of these things in place to hopefully allow me to think this way so I can take advantage of opportunities or, you know, take, um, take initiative when I think there's an opportunity present. And a lot of people just get caught up in the fear. Just don't allow yourself to experience that fear right now to create a suffering that doesn't exist yet. And, you know, it, it just, it's not there. It's not there. You're creating it in your mind. Now, do you have to address it? And do you have to think that it's possible? Of course you can't just blindly do shit. It's got to be calculated. But at the end of the day, it hasn't happened yet. Neither of them have happened yet. It hasn't not worked and it hasn't worked. You are in charge for the most part of which way it goes. There is unfortunate circumstances that have that happen. And I get that. There's no question that happens to a lot of people. And I've been in some of those at times, but you usually are most the, you know, the creator of either or. So just don't let the fear and the suffering create right now. Make sure that you are in charge of pushing that out and taking those opportunities. All right, Daily Fire episode 211, we are out. Yo, yo, Daily Fire episode 199. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. For all your supplement needs, go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire episode 199, the carrot I grew myself. So I believe most people work well when there's a carrot, right? The whole like cartoon where the fucking, uh, I don't know, the cat got the carrot and he's leading the bunny away because you got to have something to go towards, right? Which is what the fucking Mercedes is that's out in the warehouse right now. That's a big ass motherfucking carrot, a carrot that you can get in and you can fucking whip all over the place. You know what else is a big ass motherfucking carrot? The $20,000 watch, the 10,000 in crypto, all that stuff. Those are carrots. So you have something to focus on and really push, right? I know a lot of people have problems with creating what that carrot is for themselves. So what I'm trying to do and what we are trying to do at Max Effort Muscle and Corey G Fitness is set that carrot up. It's so motherfucking shiny, you can't deny it. That you want to come and get in the best shape of your motherfucking life, change your mindset and come get that carrot and whip that car and just fly down here and drive that shit off the lot. That's what we do. But think about this though, too. Like what happens if you could now, Hey, this carrot's amazing and it's going to work for everybody. Right. Including myself. I've done used cars as carrots my whole life because I'm a car maniac, but it's like, what carrot are you growing for yourself? What are you really fucking pushing for? Like I can give you a materialistic thing, but what is the, and the part of it could be material, a material item It could be a way of operation, but what is the carrot that you've put together? Kind of like the dream that's sitting up there that you're fucking chasing. You got to be chasing something. It's just like the other daily fire I talked about, whether it's drift or discipline. If you're drifting, you're really not heading towards anything. But if you choose discipline, it's like, do you choose the ball or the sword, right? It's like, if you choose discipline, then you're heading towards something, but you need to have Is it that house? Is it that town? Is it the job? Is it that freedom? Like what is that fucking carrot? So what, what did you, what carrot are you growing that the, you know, the, what seed that you're reaping and sowing and like, what is that? And that's, that right there is an interesting thought. And it's something you should think about often because all the hard days, that's why the car works so good. I want abs 2020, go to maxsuppermuscle.com. That's why the car will work so good. 
It's because the day you get up and you don't want to fucking train, you think, fuck, I'm trying to win that car. Fuck, I'm trying to win that watch. Fuck, I'm trying to get paid. And I'm trying to be bricked out like craziness. Like that right there is enough then for you to make the proper decision from not going to train to train to cheating and not cheating to food prepping and not food prepping to taking your amino recovery and not taking your amino recovery to lunge to not to lunge, right? Those are those whys in the road. And when that carrot is at the end of the fucking road, then you're going to get it. Well, guess what? That's always been there for me. So that's why nine times out of 10, I'm going to pick the one I need to fucking do. I don't pick the one I need to do all the time, but a high percentage of my life, I'm going to pick those ones because I'm chasing that fucking carrot. And so what, that's why I know the thousands of people that will do this contest will have way more success than they would if they didn't have that car. We know that that's why we fucking bought it and that's why we're giving it away because we know the impact that we can have on you is going to be an entirely different level. And if we impact you, then we're going to get what we want too, which is growth and exposure and all of that shit will take care of itself because the actual like, you know, real feeling of why we're doing it is because more people are going to get what they want. And if more people get what they want, which is healthier, a better body and an opportunity to maybe win a fucking car, then we're going to get what we want too. And so then it's like, so you need to think like after you go through this process or as you're hearing me talk, am I really like cultivating what that carrot is for myself? Am I really thinking about that? Now that's not something you could be chasing it for years. I chased that cover, that magazine, that carrot fucking invaded me for like a decade you know, when I actually had like a shot at it and it still took 10 years. Shit takes forever sometimes. But in these situations, coming up on the first of the year, coming up on the contest, like really get your shit in line. Really think about this. Because then it's like when you start to choose 90% of the time or more what you're supposed to be doing and that compounds, That's how you build a body. That's how you build a business. That's how you build a mindset. Like that's why, that's how shit really changes. Because if you think you're doing like, that's what 90% is an A, right? 90, 93%. What's an A in school? 95, 93, 93. 93%. I need you 93% to, to pick the right shit, right? But if you're only doing it, I got more 77s than I got 93. So (laughs) 77 is a C, I'm pretty sure. So if you're picking 77%, what kind of fucking result you think you're going to get? You're going to get a C result, but you want an A result, right? And that's where the, that's where that strategy comes in. That's where that carrot means a lot. So for me, it's a great example with school. Getting an A wasn't a big enough carrot for me. I didn't care. It's the fucking truth. I have a hard time acting like I care to my kids when they say they didn't get an A. It's hard for me because that doesn't move the needle for me. When I got that green Mercedes Benz 500 SEL, man, that carrot was fucking, it wasn't orange, it was fucking green. That's what I wanted. That, I would if that, if you said I had to get an A to get the Mercedes, I'd have got the A. I said I needed this many clients, pay this much stuff off to be able to get, like, when the strategy is there and the carrot is right, then you figure it out. And so that is like one of the things that I think I've done a pretty good job of in my career is always having something that I'm shooting for, pushing for, or really want. I have a narrative in my head. I have a strategy around it. I have daily action items to try to make it happen. And once again, I'll always say that they might not happen in the time frame that you want, but just know that this contest that's coming up, there's a 12 week window. There's a carrot, which is a car. There's a carrot, which is a Rolex. There's a carrot with it's $10,000 of crypto from pack protocol. There's the free items and gift cards and all that. And you get a chance to have something that's already provided for you. That is a ton of value. That is life changing. Any of these things are life changing. They're a story. They're a different way to operate. They're an expectation. When you get in and drive it, when you wear it, 
when you put it on, whatever it is, like that all happens in a process like this when you can achieve something. But just know you can also, on top of that, do more of this for yourself. And I urge you to do more of it for yourself. Come feel what it feels like at MaxEffortMuscle.com and Corey G Fitness to have something like this. Go fucking do your best to go fucking snatch it. But then also know you can continue this process quarter after quarter after quarter after year after year after year. And what you can accomplish from this is astronomical. Daily Fire, episode 199. Uh, what what I call it? Grow your own carrot. All right, I'm out. Peace. Yo, yo, Daily Fire, episode 206. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. For all your supplement needs, go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire, episode 206. This is something everybody can control. No one has control over this on you. It's your attitude. The attitude is solely on you. Now, can other people like impress upon you what their attitude is and they got a shitty attitude and they're negative and they're in that, they're fucking just in that negative kind of cycle? Of course. And if you're hanging around them all the time, they can pull at you. But the reality is you're the one that's actually in control of it. So if you're the person that walks in the room and you got that smile on, you're looking at glass half full, you're going to bring up the room, right? A lot of people will come in and bring down the room. And so if you really think about this, like even if you got shit going on and you're battling stuff, everybody is battling stuff. But if you like push forward with an attitude that's on the plus side of things, you push forward with an attitude that's glass half full, I'm telling you, life is just a little bit easier to live. Not easier, just more fun. More people want to be around you. Like, Develop an attractive personality. That's one of the things that Andrew Carnegie dropped in that book forever ago with Napoleon Hill. And I thought about that. And I was like, if I want to be a real fucking winner, do you think motherfuckers want to be around people that are always negative and woe is me and I'm a motherfucking victim? Let me answer that question for you. They don't want to be around you at all. But if you're a motherfucking winner and you're working on developing these these tendencies that are that are positive and bright and taking chances and pushing in life, motherfuckers want to gravitate around you because no, they know that you're going to fucking win and that you're going to have a fun time doing it. Now, not everything is rainbows and sunshine all the time, but I still think there's a percentage that you can look at things that way. And when the attitude is on you, I get up every day and I think, man, I, I feel blessed today to go out and do something I love. I feel blessed today that I can go and, you know, maybe make an impact on people with content. I feel blessed today to get a chance and an opportunity to do something that I really want to do with my life. But it wasn't always like that. I had to do a bunch of dumb shit I didn't want to do to get to this point, but I still had an attitude because I had hope that if I took a positive attitude in those situations that I'd get the opportunity to do this motherfucking thing right here. And so you got to look at it, even if you're in the trenches right now and you're not doing what you want to do, or you're not where you want to be, you still got to bring a positive attitude because what do you think that victim mentality is going to do for you? You think that's going to fucking help? Let me answer that for you. No. Do you think the motherfuckers want to gravitate and be around you? No, unless they want to be with the pity party with you, but motherfucker, no one is going to come save you. So why don't you try to flip that up a little bit and say, what are the things that I'm positive about and I like in my life? Not, don't let me focus on the shit I don't like. Everyone has shit they can focus on that they don't like. That's real easy. I can find a gang of shit for you right now. Do you want to hear it? No. But what you want to hear is how can I get better? Well, I'm going to tell you this is step one. Develop an attractive personality. Work on yourself. Look at things half full instead of half empty and just fucking try it. Most people have already tried the other way. I'm going to challenge you to try it this way. Attitude is everything, and it's on you. Episode 206. We out. Yo, 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 Daily Fire. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. For all your supplement needs, go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire, don't play from behind. I'm going to tell you this. This is straight up why I love the morning rituals, right? Getting up at 3.20, being at the gym at 4.00 
I always feel like I'm playing ahead of everybody, right? Whether that's true or not, that's in my head. But the reality is my effectiveness in the early morning hours is so crazy that I never feel like I'm playing from behind. You know when I do feel like I'm playing from behind? When I sleep in on accident. And then I'm behind and I didn't get my workout and behind and didn't get my reading and behind and I didn't get my organization for the day. I didn't get my strategy put together. Like I've been playing from out front for so long that feels normal. Most people are playing from behind and don't even realize it. Am I saying you got to get up at 4 a.m.? No. Am I saying that you got to be a crazy maniac exercise? No. But find your version how not to play from behind. Find your version of organization. Find your version of how to get it together so you can feel like you're playing out front, that you're ahead of your peers at work, that you're ahead of your peers in college, that you're taking care of your health, and that you're striving, like LeBron says, for greatness, that you're pushing all the time. You have to play from in front if you want that in your life. Find a way to not play from behind and your effectiveness will go, I mean, even if you just get up 15, 20 minutes early, even if you just strategize your day a little bit, like don't aimlessly wander, get it tight, get it together, stay consistent, go next level. Daily Fire, we out.